us on the mid lane. Fizz, Twisted Fate taken out by Gambit. The other side, Cassidy, of course, red side ban, and also getting rid of Evelyn now that Diamond's back. So second game in a row where we have Fizz being banned. Actually, a lot of uh, the mid laners have picked him up now with a Fiend's nerf, really made him strong again in these one-on-ones, and just overall a very good assassin pick, and one of the few assassins who actually work at the moment. Twisted Fate, of course, against Frogan. Very, very standard. We have seen him first pick it a few times already. Yeah. So you need to take it away. Not being scared of first picking. That Lee Sin taken away from Shook and Elise. So the jungles. three junglers, the three main junglers taken away from this game. So that means we're going to see possible some we interest have to picks. Especially, I mean, when Diamond's in the team, <laughs> you can pretty much guarantee now there'll be something different in there. Cogmore, however, was the first pick here for Genja. Huh, so Gambit really changing up the style a little bit, AD carry wise. Genja used to play Kogmo so much in the yeah. past, and it is such a good pick here. Trinity Force first item is what, what we normally see. Strong laning phase, fine enough mid game with Trinity Force and Blade, and then late game, of course, you are the monster we always know. So, such a good pick overall, and a pick we really see the other regions respect a lot, sometimes even ban the way. Yeah, and we've been seeing in Korea that first pick Kogmo's are a real thing that. They value highly. We'll see if Genja can do the business on him today. For Alliance, though, took no time in uh, messing around, really. Picking Gragas straight away. And we'll actually lock in Zerath here as well. So Frog and bringing that to the table. The new flavor of the month pick here for Europe, it seems. Two games in a row as well. Gragas top lane was banned the last game. Was open this time on Alliance. Quickly take it after the first pick from Gambit. And it's just such a good and safe top lane. I mean, your late game, it's not the best, you're not going to go in and just one-shot people as Gragas. You can build in many different ways, however, he can be full tank, full AP, not the best build, but we've seen it before. I want to see what Wicked actually wants to build in this game here, and what style Alliance wants to play. If they're looking to just poke away early on, like Rod of Ages first item as Gragas, so get some early AP at least, and then just start poking with Froggen and try and do as much uh, and siege as, as effective as possible. So, Rengar we were expecting with that Elise, Lee Sin and Evelyn Bands coming down that Rengar would be making an appearance here today. And it looks like Gambit will be the ones that get their hands on it. Also taking Nami for Edward. So Nami, Rengar here. If they do pick something like Orianna for Nick, they have such a good engaged team fight comp here. And it's actually funny with Diamond. The week before Super Week, he spammed Rengar in solo queue. Practice him as much as possible. Then Rengar sadly got disabled. Now he's back, of course. Diamond is back himself, picking up the Rengar. Such a good pick of all. So, what will Alliance go with then? Already have the Gragas in there and Zerath. Thinking for that top lane and mid lane. We could, however, and we have already seen Gragas sliding down the team list in and ending up in the support after uh, picking it up very, very early on. And see their wicked laughing as uh, Froggen changes over on towards Zillion. It's actually going to be Riven here locked in for Alliance. Wow. Is this Wicked playing Riven? And then we will, of course, get to see the support Gragas for Nip. We've seen it once before, worked out pretty well. They won the game as well. But I've never in my life seen... Well, I've actually seen him play, play <laughs> Riven top lane. But it's many... She. Riven's a girl. She. I've seen Wicked play she, Riven, uh. in the top I've seen him play <laughs> Riven in the top lane. But it's a long time ago, so I didn't really expect him to pick it here. Unless it's support Riven. No. <laughs> probably not. I'm just going to go out there and say probably not. Probably uh, we'll, not. We'll see though where that one ends up being put. Frogan's actually sat on Ghost and Flash right now. So we'll see about that once it actually, uh, once we see their final pick here. But what about Gambi? Yorick for Kubon. We saw it played by him actually in uh, their game last week against the Super Hot Crew. Still not sold totally on the Yorick no. pick. Can work in theory, hasn't worked in practice so much. And a Syndra lock-in as well for Nick in the mid lane. So Yorick is very strong with a hyper carry, especially in the late game team fights here. Only issue with something like a Kog'Maw is you don't actually get the W bonus with the percent magic damage here. And Gragas, it's gonna be Riven Jungle, of course. Shook's gonna play Riven Jungle here. Yes, could be. It Very is wicked. Yeah, yeah. It is. it's Riven Jungle. Brown actually locked in there as well for Alliance. So, Jungle, Riven, Gragas in the top lane, Zerath in the mid lane for Frog. And so, going for a couple of very new picks here, especially from Alliance's side. It's not the first time, of course, that we've seen Zerath 
going to be uh, the first time that we see Riven here in the European LCS, I believe, ever, yes. to be honest. I don't actually remember if we have seen it before, but first time Jungle Riven, at least here. And with all the jungles being banned away, Alliance banning two of them themselves, they really must feel confident, confident here, believing in Shogun Riven, and he can actually carry the game. I really want to see what, he, what he's going to build. Well, how he's going to play it. They see that three of those big junglers that Shook pretty much put only plays, actually, and that's going to force him onto something pretty exciting with Riven. So, guys, which one of these lineups do you think will come out on top? Because I've got no idea. Tweet hashtag GMB win or hashtag all win to at LOL Esports, and we'll check your responses once this game gets underway. But certainly an exciting one, certainly something different here from Alliance trying to curb that losing streak. Yeah, changing things up, trying to surprise some people. I mean, we talk about how the Siege combo already they had with the first two picks of Gragas and Terra here. Put in a Corgi as well. I mean, the Siege, Siege potential you can do in the mid to late game is very, very scary. And then if Shook can just pick up as much farm as possible in the jungle, he can become very strong in the team fights as well as the Riven here. But he's going to need some items and he's going to need some gold. Could see him be aggressive for the first few kills or just stay in the jungle and farm for as long as possible. Definitely got the mobility coming out there. Got a bit mm -hmm. of CC, or I say a bit of CC in there. Got decent amounts of CC and the damage certainly going to be there as well. So first time we're seeing Riven Jungle here in Europe. We'll see how it works out for Shook of Alliance as we get into game. It's Gambit versus Alliance. Both teams looking to break a losing streak. Still, it's a different story for both teams, though, because it's Alliance on a losing streak at the top of the table and Gambit on a losing streak at the bottom. For both teams, though, we're talking about moving in to secure the best possible playoffs and possibly even securing a playoff spot at all, if you're talking from Gambit's point. Of course, and Alliance want to get the top two spots, so they're straight into the semi-final as well. And then come in as the favorites with Fnatic towards the World Championship. If they do actually manage to now, fix some of the mistakes and start playing well once again. But really like these new picks we're going to see here. Taps hasn't been playing a lot of Corky either, even though it's a pick we've seen a lot in Europe. I don't actually recall seeing Taps play too often. So some new things changed up here. Still can't believe I actually thought Wicked was going to be the Riven, because my brain was like, when did I ever see Wicked play Riven in this top lane? It's been like maybe two seasons ago. Even if that, I can't really remember it at all, to be honest. As you see the first wards going down there, Edward. It happens, a fish I'm on land, you just splash of, around. Yeah, splashing around. Needs to get into the river to survive. Or something like that. Nif just bought warded over on the top of that ramp as well. Looks like we're actually going to be seeing standard lanes here from both sides. Alliance already got Corky. Gambit already got Cogmore down on that bottom side. And we have actually seen Yorick being picked into Gragas a few times, if you look back to last week, where Yorick is supposed to win when it comes to farm, but none of them can really kill each other. They're going to need the jungle to come up and help, and that's where Gragas definitely has the advantage because he can set up ganks so well. He has the slows, he has his own knockback, of course. So in that case, he should be in favor of Wicked, but it's straight up one-on-one -on -one farm. If you look back to last week, Kuban should be actually winning out, just at least like 10, 15 CS. We need to see what he can do, because last time he played Yorick, he actually fell very far behind and didn't do anything in the game. Just seen there a lot of help as well for Shook to get him underway on this blue buff. Diamond pretty much solo in his out, so we'll see as both junglers going to be crossing over the map soon where their first port of call is. And interesting to see as well how both of them go about it as well, whether we see them spending most of the time just farming up as much as they can to hit that level six point and also see where they go on builds because yeah. we've seen from Rengar players a couple of different options. A lot of different options for Rengar. We have seen full assassin from Impaler where you focus on picking off people who split pushing in the side lane or just basically standing by themselves and you just jump them and you try and kill them as fast as possible. And then we have seen the more standard full CDR tank Rengar with maybe a Feral Flare, and you focus more on engaging team fights or ganking very often with all your cooldown reduction. Because cooldown reduction on Rengar is such a good stat. I mean, it opens up for more ganks, you get more stacks as well. You can engage fights. Oh my god, eh? a, a massive ranged battle in the mid lane as well. Syndra versus Zerath pretty much going to sit just outside of their own turret and just do the damage from as far away as possible. So we'll see probably going to be the time that one of them's a little bit pushed up too far in that lane when Riven and Rengar have the chances to get him. We're actually seeing Riven recalling here, so Shook's going to be going home 
for the first time in this one. And Wicked going a little bit aggressive there onto Kubon, who typical Yorick style is going to annoy with the ghouls and get a bit more health back. Did actually get pushed down in the start here because he was helping Diamond on the blue buff and Wicked was already in lane starting to push it. So he got early level two and could now force Kubon away from some of the farms. But we see Kuban here on Yorick again against Gragas. You just keep running up, you keep poking him over and over, and Gragas won't be able to out sustain you. You have flash, you have potions as Yorick, and you're just so annoying. Well, Wicked looked like he may have been recalling for the first time there. Kuban has stepped out, and that will give Kuban this wave for almost free. Wicked is saying, okay, don't want to go home just yet. Still a little bit of farm to be had before I decide to actually do that one. Teleport, of course, will be able to bring both of them back into lane when they so decide to. In the bottom lane, it's been pretty much Gambit here, putting the pressure on, trying to keep Nif and Tabs out of things in these early stages. Always going to be dangerous there with the bubble coming out from Edward and the extra damage he can throw down. Just a great poke lane from Gambit here, constantly pushing the wave into a line, trying to deny as much farm as possible away from Tabs. But he's been doing a good job farming on the tower here. You also have the Relic Shield on Nif to even help on the tower to pick up whatever CS Taps won't be able to get. So, Diamond finally going to be moving towards the lane. It's probably going to be too late for him, though. We already see Wicked going back home as Shook was there as well. Actually, there is a hook coming down onto him. All he's slower, the route that comes down, and Shook was able to just jump himself away on towards that turret. But a lot of damage, aggressive play out of Diamond, but no real threat there of kills. However, Diamond now having a look for something in the jungle. There's not really much there. The raids have just respawned into that one. Mid lane has gone back as well, so not too many opportunities for Diamond in the mid lane either. You see Diamond going towards Feral Flare on Rengar here, so we'll be, look to, we'll be looking to just farm as much as possible and stack it up as fast as he can. And then if he wants to build damage afterwards, or will focus on going tank, will be the question we have to get answered later on. He's still staying around his top lane. There's no stacks now, so won't be able to get the root from his E, however. Going back off then to uh, just farm things up. Actually, Shock here taking a long route around and he's not being spotted by any wards. And if he comes through the tribush, Gambit aren't going to see this one coming. There is a minion wave just going through now. And Shuck will come out and they're going to spot him any second now. There we go. So Shuck Which coming through. Trouble. Can they actually get him? Nip trying to get in there. Edward going to get hit by the Q. Can they actually get him stunned up? Yes, they can. There is a stun and this is first blood and it goes to Shuck as well. I have no idea why Edward didn't just flash the Q so he didn't get slowed by Nip and could actually have escaped here. Kuban in trouble though. In trouble, but I think we'll survive there. Wicked hit level six before him and went full aggression, throwing his ultimate out straight away. Cause Kubon a few problems there, especially since that is a triple Doran's ring Gragas. Full lane focus here from Wicked and of course the tier for Kubon, which doesn't actually give him any combat stats. You need to stack it up here and making him slightly weaker at the moment. And Wicked with triple Doran's and just full lane focus, needs some early AP, the early health as well. Just looking to trade back and forth, but he could actually, he went aggressive because he had level six before Kubon did. And now we're just back to the same old Wicked pushing the wave and Kuban just sitting here farming, trying to poke Wicked as much as possible. Shock so far has come out of lane that pretty much one single time. Not going to count the one at top where it was just a slight exchange around the tribush area and was able to make it count. Although you can also attribute that to the fact that Gambit were right up the lane with no real ward protection around them. It's all well and good having one there at the bottom of the river, but if he comes out from the blue buff area and then goes straight around the back of the dragon pit, not much you can do without having vision. Now we do see finally the first blue buffs respawning in will be given over to the mid laners. So Diamond actually hit level six. He have been farming in the jungle for most of the time. We did see him top lane just for a quick moment to fight against Shook, and then he just went back to the jungle, kept on farming. Shook should be live, uh, hitting his level 6 very, very soon as well. Mid lane actually been very even. He's been farming. Yep. Both mid laners here. We haven't even seen them poke each other too much. Just straight up kill all the minions and just go back to your own tower and wait for the next wave to arrive. Yeah, as I said before, just playing the range that each of them have to their advantages and not getting too involved. Not making or taking any real risks. Diamond, meanwhile, will be getting it's red buff upon its second spawn, and then we'll see if he tries to get into any lanes. Bottom lane is not much of an option for them right now because Gambit once again push Alliance onto their tower. 
Yeah, so they have at least denied some farm from Tap by forcing him to see us under the tower. Pretty much every single wave, actually, but they still gave up the first blood because Alliance could or should could run down all the way behind him. And again, Edward, he should just have flashed instantly as Nif came towards him to dodge the Q and not even get slowed from it. Maybe he would have survived for now. Gamma doesn't seem to mind too much the fact they got ganged. They just keep pushing up here. And they still don't have a ward in the mid lane around the entrance to their own Wraith camp, which is what you normally do to avoid someone roaming down behind you. But of course, Riven is able to actually jump over the Dragon Pit and then that's come in true. behind him. Yeah, face. that's true as well. Got the mobility to just go around a, a less con uh, con Wow, can't even remember the word. What is it? <laughs> come you on, ask me? Michelle, help me out. Conventional, that's the word I'm looking for. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. A less conventional route into this bottom lane. And well, we'll see if that actually happens. Diamond in the meantime is actually coming towards mid. Level seven now, so can stealth straight in there and that's exactly what he's gonna do. But will he be able to get Froggen who sat right on top of his turret pretty much there and Froggen's like, nope, not gonna fall into that one. The stun actually missing there from Nick as well. So not a successful move at all that out of Gambit. And Diamond is just gonna get back onto farming. Get himself up towards that Feral Flare. Actually, ulti gonna come out here from Nip. Good bubble from Edward, but will that be enough to save them? Tidal Wave comes out as well. Kenja didn't get stunned up there, and Alliance throwing a lot at that gang. Gambit, though, surviving with any real, without any real problems. So look down this bottom lane here and the Summoners. There's no flash on anyone here. Only the heal from Taps actually has a Summoner spell, and of course the Ignite from Edward, but still. Fighting a little bit. None of the junglers actually showed after the very first gank where some of the flashes was used. Just been ignoring the bottom lane. Actually, both junglers just been farming for the last few minutes, which is expected from a Rengar who wants Feral Flare and the Riven, which we didn't really know what's going to happen. Kuban is in trouble though. Kuban is in a lot of trouble. No flash for him, and Shuk will finish off there with the ultimate. And that looks all too easy for them. It was Wicked that was tanking it up. Triple door and drink for him. Gives him plenty of health to make that happen. And that's a nice kill. However, Gambit now going to look to reply in the way that you'd expect them to here after losing the man in the top is to assert their power down on the bottom side. They need to be careful though. Look at Nip moving in already. Wicked Edward can TP. Will be there as well. There's the ultimate coming out of Frogger. Nip though is going to fall down. Now Nick is in trouble. TP from Wicked brought him down. There's the barrel to knock Nick right into the middle of them. He will flash away though. Can he actually escape? There's a push through the stun and surely the finisher he gets the stun back. Oh, wicked with a body slam will get the kill. And that will be a kill back then for Alliance. Leaves them 3 1 up now. And, and the, dragon. the dragon. And the dragon for Alliance here. So because they killed Kuban up in his top lane here with both Shook and Wicked, Gambit felt they could start the dragon because Shook wouldn't be able to join in time. We're just gonna see it again. Here. Wicked already recalled and TP'd down and everything from Nick was used on to Nif the support. Once Wicked joins in, he throws the ult here. Nick actually delays his own flash, so he gets knocked back here instead of flashing the ult from Wicked, and therefore they can just chase up towards him now and pick up the kill. Good double stun from him, and actually Froggen missing the last charge there as well, and didn't really matter in the end. They had Wicked as soon as that CC wore off, they were able to get through. First Dragon in the game to Alliance as well, and they've got a very healthy lead. 2,300 gold in their favor. As Edward training, sneaky little recall. Nif not gonna let that one happen. And if we look down some of the items after that one, Riggle's lantern was bought by Diamond. So gonna start working his way up towards that feral flare. Other side, Wicked, since we're in the top lane right now, is going Rod of Ages first after that triple Doran start. So we see two normal starts from Gragas here. So a lot of Lich Bane first item if you look over to OGN here. But in Europe, it's been Rod of Ages first item on Gragas most of the time and just makes you very beefy get a lot more sustain as well for, with the catalyst for your laning phase and you just want to get it as early as you can to start stacking it up and get into this late game point or not late game point but get it fully stacked and then you can start grouping up with the rest of the team and sieging down the tower or look for team fights like we saw before here with Alliance using the teleport really well from Wicked to stop the dragon pick up some kills and get a good gold lead for the team Buff then for Froggen. A theme start for him and for Nick as well. The AD carries both headed towards Trinity Force, although taking a slightly different path towards it. Sheen Phage for tabs on Corky. And Kendra obviously wanting that extra bit of attack speed earlier on has gone for Phage and Zeal, but both headed in the same direction. Nick will also be getting his blue buff here to return into that 
what has up until now been a very quiet 1v1 lane. As I said before, all about the range, just get the farm going. It's Froggen that has a lead on that front, but it's 10 CS only. I want to see how Nick will play the team fights because Alliance has a lot of tools to actually deal with him. If Nif managed to get in front of Nick here with his shield up and Nick fights his ulti, the shield would like to take a lot of the damage. And yes, okay, Nif might go down, but you can trade your support for all the damage from a Syndra in his late game team fights. And also, when you have Braum ulti, when you have the stun from Froggen against Shook and Wicked can get onto an immobile champion like Syndra. It means the team fights are going to be very, very hard to play actually for Nick, and they're going to rely on Diamond going in, lock down the target, either follow up with Bubble or stun from Nick, and just try and burst down the very first target they can get to. But it could be an issue because if Wicked is in the front with his big fat belly, it's going to be hard to get back to the squishies or get behind him and get the squishies. So Diamond there just coming towards his bottom lane, but Alliance not extended to the level that we saw uh, Gambit being extended earlier on er uh, earlier on in that lane. But he is going to come around. They got that pink ward that they cleared out the vision of Alliance just a few moments ago. However, we see Diamond is actually recalling away from that lane. So no push from him down there. No looking to get a kill. And in the end. Remains pretty quiet here, Diamond. Zero, zero, zero. So not being involved, well, I say in the kills, in that one single kill that Gambit have up until now. But he will go home, and it's all about stacking up that Feral Flare for him. I believe he's on 24 at the moment. Need the 30 point, of course, to actually make it into the Feral Flare. Shook just staying down this bottom lane. And taking some very good damage from Froggen here. Max range. It comes all. Ultimate gonna come out here and actually oh, landing two it. out of three. That third one might have been enough there to actually kill off Nick. And funnily enough, show the first real action in that 1v1 in the mid lane. Either way, he's gonna force Nick to back completely out of the lane. And Froggen's at the point here now with that extra blasting one where he just destroys the waves. Yeah, good little juke though by Nick in the very oh. end to dodge it. Diamond might be in trouble, stealthing up already. And oh, beautiful. Jumps over to Wicked. Oh, that might not be as beautiful as we think though. Shook is coming in from this one. He's got Kubon to give him a little bit of help. And Shook decided not to actually chase on from that one. Really well done by Diamond to actually escape from that scenario. Yeah, he used this all there to get vision of Wicked and jump straight down to him. He got the ulti afterwards as well. Even shot him further away. So good little, good ex escape here by, uh, by Diamond. But still, he had to use the ult to actually survive this one. And Froggen is putting a lot of pressure on his mid tower because Diamond was forced away. He couldn't go in and try and hold it after Nick went back to base. Look at that. Nick does come back in there and Froggen is trying to blast him down behind that turret whilst not taking any aggro himself. You can see from Nick's side, Sorcerer's Shoes, Double Doran's ringing and a themes there. So lacking on the raw power that Froggen will be able to put his way for now as Nif once again keeping this lane actually pushed quite far up. Just telling Edward to shut up every time he tries to recall. The lovely uh, Nami sounds. And once again, if going over stops the recall from Edward. And actually now he got back to base. Lions is staying, gonna push out the wave. This top lane, however, is a very, very big issue for Gambit. I mean, Yorick is supposed to be a very strong laner. Yes, Kuban got ganked by Shook, but he was behind in CS from the start of the game. Never really did anything towards Wicked except for forcing his teleport once. That was everything he did. Just poked him early on, Wicked went back to base, teleported to lane, and just been very happily farming and actually building extra AP. Should be an hourglass coming in, unless he wants the death cap for even more poke, but if he builds hourglass here, just makes it even harder to be someone like Nick and actually find a target to kill. And we saw Kubon after getting that initial tier, as you would expect, struggling really to stack it up, went for that man immune to help out with that to get it there a little bit faster but he's still only at 340 of the 750 bonus mana from that one so really taking him a while not gonna have that i'm guessing by that 20 minute mark here if you compare that to the raw power that wicked has right now that could mean trouble and wicked's are masses and masses of cs ahead of him close to 70 cs wicked has a lead there despite the early harassment really that mm -hmm. Kubon did to him wicked got straight through that really with that triple dorans yeah so it's the triple dorans which was the only thing he built for the lane Normally when we see Lich Bane first item, it's to make you very strong in one-on-ones. Didn't go for Lich Bane, could just go Rod of Ages and keep extending his goal lead. Really showing how much stronger Wicked are in this lane here, compared to Kubon in this game. And he's basically just looking very good towards the, the team fights. If there's going to be a dragon fight here and he teleports down, he's going to be 
twice as strong as someone like Kubon. Well, Kubon's also gonna have to pick, okay, who do I actually put my ultimate on here? Not gonna be on himself, you'd imagine, unless he gets caught out. Nick not got masses of damage at this point either, oh, but nice look at bubble. this, Nick getting bubbled up, Diamond gonna come in from the side, Shut is there, however, that tidal wave going down, Diamond actually gonna be caught out from this one, he's got Why far jump in. double TP, cancelled actually by Kubon, think it was the right decision, and with that kill, Alliance free up the dragon. But why did he jump in? He saw Shook come in with the rest of the bot lane from Alliance, and yet he jumps in all by himself. Both Genji and Edward had already backed away. Instant stun from Shook, instant ult from Nif, and you just kill Diamond. I mean, he's still very squishy. Yes, he's building some HP now, and he's going for the cooldown reduction build, but you need way more time before you can actually tank some members. Was it a, a, a call from Gambit that was it just pure, it looked like pure confusion because it did. the it rest of them were like, nope, let's take this one, Shook's there. And Diamond just jumping literally right into the middle of them, losing his life. And that will cost Gambit dearly here because it's not just a kill. The Dragon followed on afterwards and a very healthy lead for Alliance as we approach 20 minutes into this game. Not looking good for Gambit. Definitely not looking good. I mean, Shogun Riven, a champion who can really snowball into a point where you can't deal with her at all. Picked up the first few kills, already has a Brutalizer. Diamond and Tarpa once again. Well, Diamond may just end up going down from this one. A CC train coming in as Shook is going to finish up through the wall with the ultimate. Hard vision there from the brush. It's a 4 0 0 ribbon, yeah. and it's not a snowball anymore, it's, it's an avalanche. Looking very good here. Flashed the stun from Nick, so he wasn't going to get bursted down, and then just use his ult to pick up the kill. And now pushing on this mid tower will take it even more gold from Alliance. Four Alliance. Lots and lots of gold for them to be spending at this wicked point too, as well. Blue yeah, Wicked, gonna steal that one away. There's 2,000 gold over, almost 2,200 for Froggen to spend. Wicked's got 1,000, there's 2,000 for Shook as well. Gold all over the place here for Alliance, and that gold's gonna translate into items for them here, which means not only are you already losing out on kills now, but once that gold's spent, it's gonna become so, so difficult for Gambit, especially, you know, the likes of Genja and Edward in this bottom lane, Nami and Cogmore. Not exactly the tankiest of champions around. And the only member you have who can actually jump is Rengar. The rest are stuck where they are unless they have flash ready. Riven is gonna get onto you. Land is done, Lantern, combo. Wicked has a lot of targets here with his ulti if he wants to knock someone back here. And the same goes for Froggen with his stun, with all his abilities. It's gonna be so hard for Gambit to move around in these team fights and dodging everything Alliance has to offer. Which simply means if there should be a big team fight now, Alliance can pick whatever target they want and just burst it down instantly and win the fight. And that's the key here, surely, for Gambit. Don't team fight. They, they don't. can't afford to get in a battle with Alliance because they've seen time and time again here that it's just costing them. One thing we should point out though, all the kills pretty much on Shook here. Although the other lanes, you also have to point out that 208 to 185 CS with the two assists between the AD carries. Top lane is just. Well, we can almost stop talking about that one because it's such a big advantage for Wicked, not to mention the 1 0 1 scoreline as well. Mid lane, I've said it before, it's been very, very quiet, a very much a farm orientated lane. However, typical Alliance style now, they're starting to get that vision down in the enemy jungle with this outer middle turret down. Surely means a matter of time before Alliance are pushing turrets and forcing them to fight. This has sadly been a bit of a standard Gambit game lately, where there's a lot of individual mistakes. There were two times where they delayed the flashes in this game here, and actually end up dying for instead of just using it instantly and survive. Nick will often hold his own. We see the same thing here, one kill, one death. And been farming pretty well against Froggen. So that's a few issues. Lost his tower, of course, with also the help from Shook. But still, he's been doing fairly well by himself, and we often see Genji just trying to farm and farm and farm and not really get involved in anything. Nothing wrong here at all. I mean, he's just trying to get as much farm as possible. But again, as a team, just have so many issues. I mean, they pick the wrong fights. They get outplayed, to be honest. When you just look at the small skirmishes as well, they've been outplayed in this game by a line. Therefore, also fall behind in laning phase. Kubon and Yorick, it's not good enough. When he played against Subaku last week as well, it was an easy time for Mimer. You're gonna wonder how Gambit are gonna look to hold on to turrets here with the likes of 
you know, Wicked there, 270 AP on Gragas. You've got Frogger, who's got all the range in the world. Gonna be hard for them to get in and actually defend these turrets. So there we see the vote, 62 to 38%. Actually, coming down somewhat from the 74%, I believe it was, on lolesports.com before this game. But I think Alliance probably have more than that 75% chance right now, considering how these first 24 minutes of the game have gone. 100%. Just waiting for the Dragon now. 1 minute and 20. Should be Alliance Dragon. Fairly easy. Probably don't even have to use anything actually to get it. Just put up a few wards. Walk in, take it. And Wicked can stay in this top lane. And keep pushing it down and keep farming. And just save the teleport. Genji, however, will at least get some farm down this bottom lane. It's gonna be the guy Gambit is going to rely on in the late game. When you have the Yorick as well to put his ulti onto you. So Genji just needs to get as much farm as he can. And get as strong. But the lines after this dragon might just group up four members and use the siege to have even five members if they want to and use the siege comp here with Corky, Seraph and Gragas and just start poking down Gambit, force Gambit into an engage, win the team fight and get a Baron or maybe even win the game. Oh, look at this alliance here, waiting around that red buff Gambit, trying to force them away, but they're playing a dangerous game. They're going to try and dive on top of them. Tidal Wave comes out, Diamond knocked up once again. Frog and putting the damage in from range, Diamond Almost going down, but what oh, Nick doing? What Nick in the middle of nowhere there will fall down, and that's a one for zero. Red buff taken. Alliance trying to get even more from it. Diamond was recalling. Unfortunately for Wicked, his ultimate was knocked away, and there was Diamond actually recalling right under their noses. But that positioning from Nick. Not what Gambit were looking for. Nick was actually trying to get away from Nif, who stood right in front of him with the shield from Romy. He tried to move around him so he could get the ulti onto Shook and kill him. But because Nif just kept standing right in front of him, Nick was forced to move into the middle of Alliance. Not a good decision. And end up dying for it. But he just wanted to get to Shook, take him down, get the shutdown as well. And maybe flash away a trade one for one and just say worth it. We're just going to see it again here. We have to notice Nif late in the fight. First of all though, Gambit want to go in and fight for, fight for it, even though they are so far behind and they are caught in a very bad spot where they take so much area damage from both Shook and fucking Notice here Nick, he wants to just get away from Nif, get away from the shield and in try and kill Shook here. Trade one for one, doesn't happen. Well played by Nif, being very manly. That was a flash in the end from Genji that got him away from, he'd imagine, certain death if that barrel had have actually knocked him back into the team. Meanwhile, Alliance go back and are gonna get themselves a dragon. Gambit not able to come in there and do anything about that one. And there is a 10,000 gold lead coming in for Alliance with their third dragon of the game. And looking like they will be breaking that four loss streak that they're currently on. Still at the top of the table though, so loss, losing streaks not always uh, you know, all they're made out to be in terms of where you actually stand in the table. But look at this, Alliance again waiting and hoping that Kubon's going to come up. Wisely enough, though, he decides against it. It backs away, and sad thing for Gambit is when there's so much mixed damage here on the Lion's side, I mean, you have a lot of magic damage, you have a lot of physical damage because of Riven Jungle, and Riven Jungle being so far ahead. It's very hard to actually buy enough defensive items at this point. You, saw, you can see Kubon here is forced to go into early magic resist, also to lane against Wicked, which means if taps with his auto attacks or Shook gets onto him, he's insanely squishy and will die very, very fast. Yeah, actually spotting them there. And, well, nothing really coming of that one. He just puts up the unbreakable and will be able to walk away. Shook also getting more vision down on that bottom side of the map. We also saw uh, Wicked picking up a Morella Nomicon now as well. So. He's continuing to build further and further, and he's almost just one CS yeah. away from having a 100 CS lead. There it is. And he's really building just to teamfight and siege here, and we actually see Alliance finally grouping up after they took down the Dragon, they got the fight they wanted in the jungle as well, and now just start grouping up with the good combi, push it down, get a tower, can keep going. Diamond actually used his ult here, was looking for an engage, to just forced away instantly. Get spotted there. Will the Lions try and jump on top of him? Don't think so. They're on the top of a ward there as well, so that will actually give Gambit vision of their current position, which they I'm not sure what they can really do with, other than know that they're at least not on top of the Baron. In fact, they got a couple of Baron wards down there anyway, and the Lions will be forced back a little bit. Gambit just trying to keep them as far away from their base as he can, trying to build up as fast as possible in this game. 
It's going to be a good way for Alliance to also try and shut down the engage from Gambit if they do get some wards in the in Gambit's jungle. So you can spot Rengar while he's still unstealthed, and you can see him still start his ulti, and you know, okay, now he's coming in. So you need some deep wards to spot him. Started a bit like against a Nocturne, where you also need some deep wards to see him before he actually activates the ult. I we see Gragas is zoning power as well, a barrel down to stop them coming through. And did manage to get the stun onto Wicked, but as mentioned before, tanky enough with Zonya's in there with that Rod of Aegis already finished charging up. And this is just Alliance going to try and use the power that they have, the range and the seed potential to get in there and take down this inner Oh, Diamond coming in here. Although already popped, he's going to move all the way around him. Look for the rest of Gambit to go in. And never mind. Yeah, half HP and they've actually just spotted him there with that ward over the top of the wall. So. Diamond trying, looking for an opportunity, but not able to get in. Genja, I was going to say, recalling a dangerous place there with Wicked having his ultimate available and the stuns that can come out very quickly from Alliance. And I think Gambit are facing a very uphill battle to hold on to this tower. That's actually a good little combo, but it's only going to slow the inevitable. And Alliance take their fifth turret of the game. So how do you stop a siege come from taking your towers? You engage onto them. But if you're so far behind and you can't find the right engage, there's nothing you could do other than just wait for the siege come to take your tower, move on to the next one, do the exact same thing again. And if Alliance manages to pick up a, a Baron so they get the extra region as well, it's going to make it even harder for Gambit to do anything. We saw Diamond twice now try to engage and then back away because either Alliance spotted it or the rest of Gambit didn't feel like they could actually go for a proper engage. What engage with? What exactly is my question here? Jump Diamond in. jumps in at half HP. Probably going to die before the rest of Gambit there, who are a little bit zoned behind their own turret, would be able to get in. We did see Kubon actually leave before as well. He just went off down to clear the bottom wave. And that left them five versus four. Does have TP. Let's not forget that. So could have come back into things if needed. We've got less than two minutes for the next Dragon to come up, all of which up until now have been thoroughly controlled by Alliance. You can see the CS totals really getting out of control here, especially in that top lane. Still like over 100 CS now. Mid lane as well has started to build a difference at about 40 CS in favor of Wicked. A couple of 20 CS in the bottom lane as well. And just overall, Alliance got a strong control over this matchup as a whole. It's 13,000 gold. We've just hit the third, or we're just about to hit the 31 minute mark. So Alliance has been. Uh Farming a little bit now, looking for a few key items before they really want to start setting up around either Baron or potentially pushing down another tower here because they are so far ahead. They should actually be starting something, forcing Gambit into a bad situation. Now they're just giving Gambit some time to pick up some farm here. So I want to see what Tap actually picks up once he goes back. Should be the last Whisper. Will be actually the last Whisper. And now Alliance as a team can either take the Baron and go for the finish or just try and push straight down and take up as many towers as they can before they try and finish the game. I mean, those items was Randuin's picked up for Diamond. As you mentioned, last whisper for Corky. Froggen's not been back yet, but when he does, he's currently sat on 2,000 gold as well. Deathcap, Athenes and Void Staff is what he currently has. That means that Gambit facing more of a struggle on that front as well. I mean, see Genja is doing a decent job here of trying to get as much farm as he possibly can. We see Alliance just waiting on Dragon, knowing there's no real pressure gonna come in from Gambit whatsoever. They're having to deal with the top lane and the mid lane that are already pushing down towards their base. All right, so let's see what Froggen wants to spend all his gold on here. He could go towards an Hourglass, unless he wants an instant, in an instant item now. He will actually go towards the Hourglass. And it's very smart because who's Nick gonna kill? If even the squishy members has like hourglass or banshees or something, there's not really a target for Nick to focus and just take down. And then it's up to Alliance to just collapse onto him instead, and kill him because he doesn't really have an option right now. He needs his voice stuff. He needs an hourglass. Everyone from Gambit needs a lot of items before they can even team fight. Not exactly close when you compare that scoreboard. Shucks, jungle ribbon. First time that we're seeing it here and. Something tells me it might not be the last time, considering how well it's gone for him. 4-0-1 after three big jungle bands, the main three jungle bands coming out. We expected some differences, considering those bands. One wasn't quite ready, though, for the jungle. Riven to be coming nope. out here. 
for Alliance, but worked wonders for them. It's got four of the six kills that Alliance currently have. And they're starting to squeeze them in, oh, but they're the Nick target. catching out Tabs. We talked about the target before. Who's got the protection? Tabs is one that doesn't really have the protection, and Nick able to find that pick. Glimmer of hope there, maybe for Gambit. Actually, they're going in here, but I'm not sure this is the best decision. Wicked gonna come across the side. Frogan throwing his ultimate in there, and Shuck gets himself another kill. Diamond on the top side will be left all alone, and Shuck just gonna chase in here. If he can manage to land what he needs to land, three of them on top of him, and that will be Wicked taking down Diamond. Frogan here gonna be jumped on by Nick. His two men though, and Frogan takes a big burst oh, they inside got it. of the oh, Baron Pit. Where they got it. Didn't have it available. Use it just a little bit before that. Well, now a line starting to close in further. Good stun on towards Chuck. Nick still alive. Kubon gonna be the big target, but Wicked is coming around the side. Actually flashed in there as Kubon uses the ultimate on himself. Still kind of in the middle of no man's land here. There's a barrel oh! ball in and misses from Wicked. He's actually turned away to go for Kubon, who himself has flashed away. And in the end, they get neither of them. Well, still actually a good team fight from Gambit here, very messy, a lot of small fights everywhere. Everything started from Nick, instant killing taps, and then he actually kept going here, flashed over, got the stun onto Froggen, and managed to get a kill on the side of Kuban, due to Nick playing it really well. We're just gonna see the taps here. Poor little taps getting completely destroyed by Nick, getting a very good kill. There was no banshees yet in taps, so it could still kill him here. And then the rest of the lines, they wanna fight. Kuban is down this bottom lane, he needs to teleport in to join. There's nothing he can actually teleport on, on to join the team fight. So Alliance can pick up a few kills here. We're just gonna see Wicked, Shook, and Nip. So joined in, of course, by Froggen. Take down both Diamond after some time. And Nip would put. I don't even think it's a team fight. It's just a lot of small fights everywhere. And now Froggen, because Kuban actually teleported in behind him, just joins in, and Nick wants to go for the kill. Flash after him. Get the stun on him right here. Get another kill. Decent trade by Gambit, well played by Nick. That's what they've got to do, and they probably need to do it now two, three times. Obviously, the longer we go on, the more that Gambit can do with those single couple of kills. Diamond just trying to keep Nif and Shook away from them. Actually, Nif goes around the corner, spots that Nick is there. Ultimate out of Frog and almost 100% Nick. And now he's in all kinds of trouble and he's surely going to go down here. Going to throw everything at Shook, but he's tanky enough as well to actually survive through that one. And Alliance get that kill. Looks like they're going to head back to Baron. Yeah, Kuban is in the bottom lane without teleport. Remember, he used it before. And we just see here what a Seraph can do late game, especially against a target who can jump away from your ult, hit the first one, hit the second, hit the third, and Nick was down to 10% HP, just from Froggen's damage with, damage with his ult. The rest of Gambit actually, except for Kuba now, still down his bottom lane. Looks like they want to try and stop the turn. Yeah, Froggen is actually trying to, or managing to, keep them zoned away from that tri <laughs> Baron <laughs> area. The tidal wave was uh, slightly late, just trying for a bit of a cheeky steal there at the end. And I don't know, you know, his ultimate's down, but worth the chance and worth the risk either way. And Alliance once again now are going to go returning to base with good chunks of gold. 1500 on the AD carry, there was plenty in there for Froggen as well. Froggen finishing off his Zonia's Hourglass. Ruby Sidestone was done, albeit a small item, smaller item for Nif there as well on Brahm. And just generally Gambit managing one glimmer of hope there, managing to catch out Tabs. We'll have to see if they do it again because when something like that happens, usually Alliance are going to say, guys, be careful. No going alone right now. We don't need those kind of little errors and to be caught out around the map and risk this game. Yeah, credit to Gambit for extending the game, but Alliance have been so far ahead for the last 10, 15, 20 minutes. They should have been able to pressure Gambit more than they have done. Should never get in a situation where you trade two for two, like we saw before here. And it was actually fairly close. I mean, due to Nick's plays, picked up two kills and they couldn't even take him down. I'm not sure if Nick had, if, if uh, Wicked actually killed him in the very end. Seems like he did because he got an extra death here. But still, Alliance not really been able to use the massive lead to try and close out the game. But now with the Baron, they might be looking for finally pushing into the base of Gambit. Also a death cap for Wicked. <laughs> Put that on top of his Sonya's Rod of Ages and Morella Normicon. So we've got a full powered Gragas able to zone you away from your turrets. I think most importantly at this stage of things. Nick himself though obviously can stay back and has got 
good damage. We've got Genja as well, who's got that range. We'll see if Alliance are able to break through this one. It's going to be about if Nick can land a good stun onto someone like Tabs, I think, as to whether they decide to jump forward and try and have a go at it. And even then, you've got Wicked, who can just throw down his ultimate and knock you straight back away. And Diamond is staying in the base here, so he won't be able to flank around them because they will spot him if he stealths towards them from the base here. So it doesn't look like Gamma actually want to engage, just try and poke onto Lance and clear the wave as fast as possible every single time and delay Alliance from actually getting the tower and therefore try and waste the Baron buff Alliance picked up. There we go, it's actually getting the bubble onto two, but it's wicked and if they get bubbled. Still a very good one. Yeah, we could actually lose him more than half of his health. Gambit side, they still need to be very weary here because Corky gonna be doing the damage. Froggen in particular, see they're blasting, doing lots of damage to Edward Ulti coming away. Force the flash, Wicked actually going in. Well, Zonya's there, tidal wave coming through. And I think that the Lions wanted to just slightly back away from that one. They do force Edward to move away, but I think that Gambit might be able to hold off at least for this next wave. But we have to remember, Wicked is built to poke a lot and to have some burst damage with all this AP. But if he goes into the face of Gambit, then he's not very tanky and he can die very, very fast. So we saw him go in, instant hourglass and flash away afterwards. And Alliance couldn't actually go for the dive because they don't really have a tank at the moment. They couldn't just tank or keep, uh, have someone diving in, tank the tower and try and kill Gambit because they're also far ahead. They're all about poking and poking and poking. And as long as Gambit dodged around it, they forced Alliance away. Didn't even take the tower. No tower down and do get a, another dragon there at the end, which extends their lead to 17,000. It's a massive, massive lead for Alliance. Oh, this Baron buff looking like it may be timing out with no objectives, actually. Uh, I guess we could say they took a dragon from it, which was completely free True. for them, considering their pressure on the map, but not able to get in there and finish off turrets. However, pinging now towards that mid lane. Gambit have got three men on the bottom side of the map. Yorick just recalling from the top side, so pushing out these lanes as far as they can, meaning that Alliance either have to back away completely and push those lanes out, or focus on the mid lane, which Gambit have done a good job of defending up to now. Didn't even have to use anything from Diamond or Kuban. It was all about the bubbles from Edwards, the wave clear from Nick, and then Genji staying back and trying to poke as much as he could together with Nick. And did manage to keep them away because, again, there's no tank on the side of the line to actually go in and lead the tower dive. I mean, if you go in an hour last, the tower just instantly switch target anyway, so not exactly much use to have Wicked going in first. Shook did pick up his Randon's Omen, so he might be the one looking to go in and tank tower. Nif could also be the one, but... I mean, I mean, I mean Nif would be the only tank on the line, or for Alliance here, but... I'm not sure he's tanky enough to actually go in in front and survive someone like Genji and Nick. Funny thing is, if Shook could have not gone into damage, maybe he wouldn't have that 5-0-3 by now. They would at least, though, have a very, very tanky player with all that gold that he's managed to earn. Let's see then, as he come back up on the steps towards this mid lane. There's Nick taking a big blast out of Frog, and that might be enough to force him away. Diamond and Kuban at the front, though, just trying to keep Lions out trying to get a slow or something off onto Tab so that they force into Valkyrie away there if he's really feeling that danger. But for Alliance, it looks like they're just baiting or waiting out the timing for those waves to come through. A little bit of damage here, a little bit of damage there. Ultimate will push Diamond to the side, but not enough to actually kill him. They just keep poking, looking for the chance here. Wicked one to push Diamond towards the rest of Alliance and just kill him. And he does take a lot of damage. Same goes for Gendra. Yeah, that, I uh, think that might be it. Yeah, I think that might be it here. I'm good dodging away dodging from Diamond, right. but I think that may be enough for them to get a turret. Nick also going low there. They've they got the sun on towards Kuba. He flashes away. Shook coming through. Gets himself one. There's a kill for Gragas as well. Ultimate was used by Nick, which took Shook, uh, Shook low, but wasn't enough to kill him off. And now Alliance have got a wave coming in on this top lane, and that means two in hits. All they needed was one kill, and then forced the rest of Gamma back here to push through the towers staying around gambit still may be looking for a fight here maybe but diamond getting knocked up there is wicked diving in as well not quite enough to finish off there's a flash from top to get that kill though and that means that alliance coming through nick will go low double kill max range rocket from time 
second in him, three men dead. This is surely the game for Alliance. This will be the game here. The man spoke him so long. Genji will go down. Genji's gonna fall as well, or, or not just yet, because he gets the ultimate out of Yorick, but not sure how much of that's really gonna give them to defend on these Nexus turrets. Genji will slowly but surely be timing away from this one. Got a last little present for Alliance, but those turrets going down, and that is going to be the game here. Tidal wave going a little bit wide from Edward. He's just throwing things left, right, and center. Alliance looking maybe for some more final kills on top of the fountain, but the Nexus being hit by Tab to the back, and Alliance break their losing streak. But for Gambit, things go from bad to worse. And a bit like Subaru in the last game here, Alliance were ahead for pretty much the entire game and just tried to play it very, very safe. We had one team fight where they traded two for two. Otherwise, everything was about Alliance in this game here and just making sure they didn't give Gambit any chances to actually come back in the game. So I have to ask you then, at this stage for Gambit, Diamond coming back into the team. So they had Lulex and of course Kubon replacing Darian. It's always hard to, to really tell after one game, but there was, for me, no real marked improvement. Yes, okay, this was, let's not make any mistakes, first place case, uh, against last of place course. here. But did we see an improvement from Gambit? Because I don't think I did. No, I agree. And I honestly feel like there's too many individual mistakes. We talked about it in the game how delay your flashes, all of a sudden it's too late, you die anyway. Wrong decisions, early mid-game from Gambit as well, led to them fall behind, they led to them lose all the dragons. And once you start losing every single dragon, you just fall even further and further behind. Kubon in the top lane couldn't do anything against Wicked, like lost the lane by 100 CS or something, which is not supposed to happen when, happen when you play Yorick. Then why do you pick Yorick? I mean, it's not like late game, you're just going to carry the entire game. So just a lot of issues for Gambit, still a lot of uh, individual performances, which weren't good enough. Credit to Nick, he tried. Genji as well picked up a lot of farm, but it was never enough to do anything because the lines were so 